All right, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor. And in today's video, we're gonna go over the importance of dollar cost averaging into your yield max ETFs and defiance ETFs. So what I like to say on this channel is not to quickly enter a big position in some of these ETFs, because as you can see, they do have wild price swings every once in a while, and you have to be able to dollar cost average your way into a nice sizable position. Advise anyone, you know, obviously none of this is financial advice but i wouldn't suggest that anyone put over 1000 shares you know right away into some of these etfs unless you have a massive portfolio to work with because then you're buying sometimes at all-time highs so you don't know exactly what the price movement's going to be in the future and i'm going to show you guys exactly how i do this in my portfolio because i just made quite a few buys today and today in the market it's quite substantially down so you can see like the s p 500 is down 0.77 percent dow 30 is down 0.79 percent and then the nasdaq taking the biggest hit down one percent and then also the russell 2000 is down 2.24%, which definitely affects our portfolios. So as you can see in my portfolio, I'm down to $31,617 today, and that's down 2.29%. So obviously this portfolio is very volatile. So when the market gets hit, I also get hit and I'm down two and a half, almost two and a half percent today. I also have my M1 finance portfolio here pulled up for you guys. At one point yesterday, I was up about 20%, and now it says my all-time return is about 15.45%. So we have a lot to go over in this video, and if you guys do enjoy content like this and appreciate the face cam, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and let's get into this video. All right, so what did I do today? I did a lot of things this morning with trading. So yesterday's video was my plan for the yield max distributions of 2024, the first distribution, and I, what I said I wanted to do was buy up some more Tesla, get around 600 shares before the yield max x dividend date and that will be january 4th which is tomorrow and that's the declaration date and the x dividend date will be on friday but as you can see Tesla has been going down pretty substantially today, three and a half percent. So I decided to buy 20 more shares here today and lowered my average share cost by seven cents. So now I'm sitting at 1380. So you can see now my total total return on Robinhood, which is price return alone. I'm down 16.24 percent. You can see my portfolio diversity has been going down for Tesla because I have been adding to other positions as well, which I'll show you later on in this video. But if we want to take a look at my 20 shares here you can see i bought 231 dollars of tesla here 20 shares at 1157 so if we go into this share price here you can see we're at 1157 currently and that's why i dollar cost average because anything that i buy below 1380 is averaging down my position but in the past week this was the best time to buy so that's why i wait a little bit and i don't throw all my eggs into one basket right away because i was enjoying this way up for tesla you know we saw some lows in december at 1080 I did add some during that time as well and then I was enjoying this ride up throughout December and then you know now at the start of the new year in 2024 things have taken quite a bit of a turn people are selling out of some positions and you know a little trimming has been done in the market and now my best buying opportunity as of lately has been today at 1157 so I bought 20 more shares of Tesla and I also did not add any positions to my Nvidia you know it's a healthy one and a half percent pullback for NVIDIA, but I'm going to keep my position the same in NVIDIA. AMZ as well, look, it's up today, so why would I add to my position? I'm still up to 0.85% on AMZ. My average cost is 20.59, so I'm keeping my position alone. You know, I'm not just going to buy because the whole market's down. It just depends on each position. Then here we go, the big dog Coney. What did I do today? Well, yesterday I showed you guys that I had like 17 and a half shares I bought in the morning. If we take a look at the past week, you see Coney is down 13.67%. Everyone was hyping up Coney, you know, at $30 per share. I was saying there's still possibility for Coney to go to $40, $50 per share, right? If Coinbase stock continues to rip higher and hit all-time highs. Yes, this ETF can go with it to a degree. Don't buy when it's 
hitting all time highs. Wait for pullbacks. There's always going to be a pullback. It doesn't doesn't always just continue to go up. I saw this opportunity today and I bought some more shares. So yesterday I bought 17 and a half shares right early in the morning. That was uh, January 2nd. I bought about 17 and a half shares. Then I bought some more shares, another like 10, 15 shares, which brought me up to about 38 shares. And then this morning I bought 12 more. So now I'm at 50 shares and I'm already down on my position. But that's not a big deal. I only have 50 shares. If I want to buy more on X dividend date, which will be on Friday, I will. I could buy another 50 shares, no problem. Bring the share cost average all the way down to maybe 23, 24, depends on what where the stock goes. That's why I like to dollar cost average my way down, because you never know what's going to happen with these ETFs. If you go over like year to date, the one year chart, price return still up. So if you guys did buy on Inception, you're still up, but maybe it's time to add a little. You know, you never know. But I don't like to dollar cost average up. But if you do believe in Kony for the long term, maybe dollar cost averaging up would be a good idea for you. So let's take a look at my buy though today. So you can see it's already coming back a little bit and we'll see what happens at the end of the day. Of course, it's only, you know, midday trading. So anything could happen with Kony. But let's take a look at my position here. When when did I buy? So I bought two shares at 25.46 this morning, about an hour ago, and then I bought 10 shares at 25.49. So 25.49 was my buy this morning, and you can see it's at 25.66, so I'm already up on those shares that I bought. So that's why I like to dollar cost average with Kony. Defiance ETFs, I'm keeping alone because, you know, I have all month to really buy those. So there is more urgency with my yield max positions because we do have those dividends coming up. So that's why I focused a little more on yield max today compared to defiance ETFs. So I kept my QQQY alone in Robinhood, but I will show you my M1 finance portfolio where I made a buy of Tesla and QQQY. So let's go into let's go into M1 finance here. Let me show you what happened. So I put in a deposit of $500 yesterday and that cleared this morning. So we did 10 buys this morning, $499.97. Why did I do this? Because I felt that it's a good start to the new year. Prices were down a little bit. So let's throw in 500 bucks into M1 Finance. So what did I buy with my $500? I bought $18.40 of JEPQ in here, Walmart $33. QQQY, $211.71. Tesla, it bought $126. Starbucks, $23. Ford, $30. John Deere, $22.30. MasterCard, $526. Apple, $19.94. And Cummins, $785. With that, fi with that $500, you know, I increased my income with JEPQ, QQQY, and TSLY. I'll show you guys more of those positions in a little bit, but that's why I like $2 cost average in M1 Finance as well. And I'll I'll show you more of my income slice in a little bit and show you how I increased my positions. Let's go back into my Robinhood portfolio, show you exactly what more I bought today because I did open a brand new position. So the way I got this money was I sold 10 shares of TGIF today and that was about $1,000. So I'm using my own portfolio to fund these investments. I didn't add any new money today and I can if I want. I still have $222 of buying power left over. So if the stock market continues to fall today, I'll buy more shares, no problem. PYPY, so what I said to you guys in the last video, if this share price you know, drops below my average cost, I'm buying PYPY. So today I bought 10 more shares of PYPY at 19.33. I set a limit order in to buy 10 more shares. So now I'm up to 60 shares of PYPY, going to be getting my first dividend payment in January, you know, this coming week, and I'm down 0.56% on this position now. You know, I was up at 1.5%, and this one has taken, you know, a nice pullback today, and I'm happy about it. Buy more shares, why not? You know, it's falling with the overall market. Nothing changed of the underlying stock. PayPal is still the same company as it was yesterday. So that's why I bought more. And then I also, well, JEPQ and JEPE, you know, the JP Morgan funds I buy $20 a day of. So I'm going to average down on those as well. So that's another way I dollar cost average. And then here it is, my new position, SQY. So a lot of people were selling out of Tesla. I made the video, why is everyone selling Tesla? And that wasn't targeted towards anyone. Like I don't really, I love all the YouTubers that make videos videos on high yielding ETFs. I follow every single one of them. I watch everyone's videos. I like and subscribe to all of them. And I like to see everyone else's perspective. You know, I don't care 
about uh, drama or whatever, because I'm just a, a normal guy, and we're all normal guys just reporting fun, entertaining content for everyone. Yield max SQY, you know, option income strategy ETF, right? So a lot of people were selling at, they were kind of chasing yield, to be honest with you. A lot of these guys wanted to chase yield, but you just gotta, you gotta wait a little bit. You can't just chase yield right away, because what happens if, you know, we've seen it with AMD, like everyone hopped in AMD right away because they saw that 64% dividend yield. And then, you know, the most recent one wasn't 64% or whatever that they reported. So you have to just wait it out a little and average down, slow yourself into these positions, dollar cost average. Like some guys were selling Tesla at like, it was up to 1240 at one point. So people sold out and then hopped into SQY and Kony at like all time highs for these ETFs. And you just got to be careful when you do that because I don't want to see you guys get burned. You have to buy these positions slowly, in my opinion. So my average cost here is $23.77. I did buy today at the lows. You know, it's still a bit lower than where I bought, but not a big deal. It's five shares. I could buy 20 more shares and then lower this average share cost whenever if it continues to drop. Yes, my average cost is above inception date. So I did, you know, miss out on $3.77 of gains so far but not a big deal. You know, I could always average down. Like I said, I still have plenty of buying power and I can deposit money if the market continues to drop. But this is my new position, SQY. So I'm excited to see. If you guys are chasing yield, that's fine if the yield stays consistent. But with Kony and SQY, there's just so many variables that the yields may not stay consistent. Kony might not stay over 100% yield in the next year. So you just have to be conscious of that. I, I'm a firm believer in Kony, Tesla, you know, I like all the yield max ETFs, you know, I'm not Tesla fanboy versus Kony, like there's no argument there, like they're both great, but I have more in Tesla, so I want Tesla to do well, obviously. You could see like my Jeppy re reoccurring by 20, JEPQ reoccurring by 20, QQQ, which is the overall NASDAQ ETF, 20 and SPY is 20. So I buy $80 a day into this portfolio. So I load up my portfolios, dollar cost my way in, dollar cost average every single day. And the reason is because you never know, there might be another jump. So like you could see, Today, I was down to 31.588, and then now we're jumping back up. So we'll see what happens by the end of the day, but I wanted to show you guys how to dollar cost average. So there's a lot that I did today to update my spreadsheets because I did a lot of buying and a lot of you know fun things in here. So let's take a look. So right here, I have Tesla, NVIDIA, AMZ, QQQY, JEPY, PYPY, and then this TSLY and QQQY right here is my M1 Finance only portfolio. So I kept these separate because it's just easier to track for, for me, but I do add them up together into my dividend tracker on this website. So this is just my personal dividend tracker. A lot of people are asking me where I get this dividend portfolio tracker. Go on YouTube and type in Ryan Williams, R-Y-N-E Williams, and he provided this portfolio tracker to all of his subscribers. You just have to enter your email, which is fine. He sends you like a little thing, a little newsletter, and it's great. But this is where I get this portfolio tracker, and it's really, really nice portfolio tracker. And it shows, populates this. If you just type in like SQY, this pops up, and then it shows you the share price and day change, all these great informational bits in here. In M1 Finance Tesla, I have 82.22 shares because of my recent buy that I showed you this morning. QQQI, I'm up to 74.40 in here, 1780 share cost. Tesla, I'm down to 13.37 in M1 Finance. So my average cost is lower than it is in Robinhood. But you can see I just inputted all my positions. I increased the positions that I bought and we could go over to my returns and they aren't looking that pretty, honestly. So you can see all time now I'm down 2.69% on Tesla and PYPY, I'm down 0.4%. Tesla in M1 Finance, I'm down 2.96%. QQQY, I'm down 2.75% in M1 Finance. IWMY, my my recent purchase that I made on X Dividend Day is still down 4.12%. And then Kony, right now, I'm down 1%. These are new purchases, so it doesn't really matter. 1.7% 1, 1 and 1.35% all-time return. But that's not a big deal. We'll figure it out. We will reinvest dividends where we see the deal for the next month or two. And we'll go from there. So, you know, today was definitely a pullback in the market. So we have to capitalize on that. Yes, it looks ugly. Everyone gets all upset. Psychological thing where you you feel worse when your money 
you know, goes down than you would even if your money, you know, multiplies like crazy. Like it's a crazy thing where investors hate to lose money more than like they love to make money. It's like, I don't know how to really explain it. Just the, the fear of losing money is more than, you know, gaining a lot of money. So that's why like there's panic selling and stuff like that. It's hard to explain really. So let's take a look at my M1 finance portfolio. Let me show you guys my positions in here. And you can see that, I, you know, I bought some of these too with today's buy like Jeff. Q, you know, this one's up 13.32%. But if we take a look at my Tesla and QQQY positions, these really dollar cost average because, you know, M1 Finance does a very good job at dollar cost averaging. So I have $952 in here of Tesla. You can see my all time return on here is negative $34. Dividends, Earned is 113, market gain negative 147, and you could see that today it's down 3.71%. But I have 82 shares here, average share cost of 13.37, and it cost me about $1,100. So that's Tesla in here. And then QQQY, of course, dollar cost averaging. And what, how I dollar cost average in M1 Finance is that anytime I receive dividends from my other positions, I'll do a buy into my big portfolio and whatever's undervalued m1 finance will automatically put that money into the position so usually these are undervalued because they do lose a lot of value like qqqy their share price i believe it'll never go back to 20 you know they're just not income etf is not focused on capital appreciation. That's just how they were designed. Well, I don't think they'll ever get back up to $20 per share. Maybe in a year or two or three, they'll be down to $6 per share, $5 per share maybe. But of course, that doesn't mean you're gonna lose money because sometimes the dividends outweigh the the share price decline. So I'm not saying that you're going to lose money if it goes down to $6 per share. They may, in fact, have to do like a reverse stock split. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm not saying that right away, but that could happen. So in QQQY, we are at, are at 74.42. So I think my define, like I'll make a full video on what, how I, what I believe in what's going to happen with defiance over the long term. But I think I'm done adding my money in Robinhood into the Defiance ETFs because I kind of do believe you can make a lot of money with the Defiance ETFs, but I do believe over the long term with that strategy, it's just going to see constant share price decline. And I kind of want my, I want the ability to make income, large amounts of income, but also see share price appreciation. That's just what I've learned from investing in these. You know, this YouTube channel and these investments, we're all learning together. It's not like we all know exactly how to do all of this. Like Tesla, there's a chance for awesome income like we've seen over the past year. This one has the longest track record and it does have the possibility of share price increase as we saw with Kony. So there's a lot to understand and figure out throughout the years and we'll go from there. So let's go into my dividend tracker here. So you can see I updated this dividend tracker now. So we're sitting at $49,000 in income investments. You see my dividend yield increased a little bit because I bought these new positions. And if we go into into my payout calendar, a lot of things have changed. So my January income has increased and this increase is based on previous month pay payments. So this first week, we're not gonna get paid from IWMY because we bought on X dividend date. But if we take a look here, cancel out this 50 here, but we get around $64.76 from JEPY from Defiance. Then we get a 144.06 from QQQY. Then we get $3.77 from QSR and then VG Properties is going to pay us $6.29. That's all on January 4th. So that's fantastic. Then on January 6th, we'll get $15.41 from weekly. Then as well, summary for January 10th, they don't accurately have the payment date in for the yield max ETFs, but they do have them right here. So based on last month's payment, if all things stay equal, I'll make around $700 from yield max ETFs. And then the third week, SPHD and TSLP will pay me $24.91. So I increased my January income by about $100 just from buying Kony today and SQY, which is not even in here. 
So this will this will populate as the month goes on, and I'll show you guys exactly how much I make for January as well in a month end update. So let me know what you guys think of the portfolio. Did I make the correct buys today? What what did you guys do? Did you buy any more? Did you sell out? Did you get nervous because Coney has dropped down and you bought at thirty dollars per share? Let me know your guys' thoughts. If you guys did find value in this video and like this style of content, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.